Good day, everyone! Today we'll be going over some of the more efficient ways of collecting tombstones of poetics in Shadowbringers. We got a good amount of ground to cover, so without further ado, let's get started. Before anything else, be sure to stop by Idleshire and speak to Chloe to pick up your weekly copy of The Wondrous Tales. Tombstones are often given out as rewards for simply collecting stamps as you complete your daily roulettes, and a good chunk of them too. And should you not have enough stamps by the end of the week, remember that you can always undersize duties on a higher level job and still receive stamps for completing them. Which brings us to the daily roulettes. These will be responsible for most of your tombstone gains, namely 50, 60 and 70, Alliance, Normal Raids, and Main Scenario, being just shy of funding an entire Relic Weapon. It's worth noting that Alliance and Main Scenario specifically do reward significant amounts of experience, so consider running them on jobs you still need to level up. Other viable alternatives for Tombstone grinding are Heaven's Ward's Aetherochemical Research Facility and Stormblood's final dungeon the Gimlet Dock. These are both story dungeons with not only high Q demand, but also high probability of first-time bonuses for those extra tombstones. Just remember to be patient as players enjoy their cutscenes for the first time. For a more community-driven effort, consider joining hunt-specific link shells to partake in hunting trains, where players work together to find and slay valuable targets in succession. Hunting trains have always been popular for their exceptional tombstone games, and invites for link shells can often be found by simply throwing out a shout in one of the major cities. A more casual approach to farming tombstones can be had by completing B-Stripe dailies from previous expansions, doubling as a good opportunity to level up your reputation. Though limited to 12 per day, these also offer a good chunk of experience for leveling different jobs, especially while waiting in queue for your daily roulettes. And if you have a friend who hasn't had the opportunity to experience the joy of previous raid tiers, why not offer to help them clear it? The Coil of Bahamut and Alexander can be easily cleared with current equipment, and rewards all players with bonus tombstones as long as it's someone's first time. A much lesser known alternative to farming poetics is the Masked Carnival. Blue mages of level 50 and above can try their hand at completing the many available stages for sizable first-time rewards. While more experienced players can challenge the weekly targets, indicated in the timer's window, for even greater rewards. And finally, we have a more specialized alternative to farming poetics in the Forbidden Land of Eureka with notorious monster fates rewarding generous amounts of tombstones. While we won't be getting into the specifics of Eureka here, the recent demand for tombstones has revitalized this content in many different servers. And if you were ever interested in catching up to it, now would be a good time, and you can do so by speaking to Galiena in Ralgar's Reach. And that concludes my recommendations for farming poetics across a wide variety of content, to make it seem like less of a grind and more like a journey. Whether you plan to self-destruct yourself to victory in the carnival, or level up in the forbidden land of Eureka, let me know what your favorite methods are, and I hope to see you next time.